everyone i'm heather and welcome back to my channel so we are back today with deathmark in the last one uh we finished up the miss zoo chapter it was my least favorite chapter thus far so hopefully this next one is better but let's go ahead and get started okay so we just need to talk to start the next chapter mary isn't here anymore should i rest for today yes I decide to rest for now. Okay. So that's officially the close of Miss Zoo. I did not care for that chapter. It's been nearly a day since we found Mary. We're like a boat adrift on the ocean without a compass to guide us. Who knows where the currents will take us? Will we find salvation at the end? Hey, Mr. Yashiki. Looks like we wasted a whole day. Is it going to be like this every day? If you're done checking in here, why don't we take a look outside? Mary said unnecessary contact with outsiders could speed up the Mark's curse. And if I lose any more of my memories, I'm not sure I'll be able to function. For the past ten days, the only other person I've spoken to is this convenience store clerk. Ah, that explains why we've only had TV dinners and snack food to eat. But sitting and waiting isn't going to accomplish anything. I'd rather not wind up forgetting my own name, like you. Not that I completely believe that this cursed thing is real. She raises her voice to hide how it shakes. She's still stubbornly sticking to her denial of the existence of spirits and the mark. But I know she's already accepted it. After all, she went through herself last night. Ghosts and curses don't exist. Why'd this have to happen to me? Hiro is startled at the sudden knock. A visitor in the middle of the night? I don't need Mary to know it's a mark bearer. Sorry to impose on you so late. A tall, thin man walks in. His skin is as white as a sheet, and dark circles nearly swallow his eyes. It's almost like a dead person stands before us. You're Yushiki and Hiru, right? I heard about you and the Mark from Yasuoka before I came here. Something about a Miss Sue, too? Sounds like you had a rough night. He seems to know Yasuoka. Maybe she's following through on her promise and sent him to help us. Well, let's get introductions done. I'm Shuji Daimon. I think you can guess my occupation. Wearing this thing means I don't have to explain, thank goodness. He gestures to the stethoscope around his neck. What kind of business brings a doctor like you here? Daimon's eyes flicker over the suspicion in Hiru's tone. No need to be so defensive. I have the cursed scar, same as you. The mark. He unbuttons his shirt to reveal a familiar mark on the left side of his chest. It just suddenly appeared one day. Though to be honest, I never thought it happened to me. Maybe it's punishment for being stupidly curious about it. Curious? Did you know about the mark before Yasuoka told you about it? Yeah, that's right. There's mention of a strange scar in my grandpa's records as a military physician. I did some personal research. A military physician's records would mean they'd be from the Second World War. More than 50 years ago. But that doesn't add up. Rumors of the mark only started about a month ago. If it was mentioned in those records, the rumors would be much older. There's a reason for that. Patients with the symptoms were kept in a secret army laboratory. After the war, all top secret documents related to the lab were burned. Except the clinical records I found. A secret lab, huh? That's kind of hard to believe. Except we've seen it! Mr. Diamond, you don't mean to say the mark was used as some sort of biological weapon? 
Every country has at least one or two soldiers who were divinely possessed. People only call on gods when they're in trouble. It was the end of the war, and they were backed in a corner. How unscientific. Don't you think so, Mr. Yoshiki? We can't deny it's possible. What? Are you serious? I can see why Yasuoka gave you her stamp of approval. The way you consider every possibility is indeed admirable. That open-mindedness must allow you to face the supernatural. However, it's hard to picture the mark being used as a weapon. It seems the 13th Army Engineering Lab was developing something. It was called the Cannon Soldier. Cannon Soldier? That makes me think of the Bodhisattva Cannon? Fifty years ago. And the Buddha statues. It can't be. Dr. Diamond, where is the lab? Unfortunately, I have no idea. Sorry. The documents my grandfather kept don't give any details about it. I see. We know where it is! Hey, Mr. Shiki. That 13th Army Engineering Lab. Is that the shelter Zukawa went to? She pulls out her old map. I'd wanted to keep it a secret, but as I'd rather not die from this mark, I'll tell you. This shows the entrances to the 13th Army Engineering Lab. Whoa, are you serious? In his excitement, he starts coughing. My apologies. Where did you get that, Hiru? My grandfather passed six months ago. We were sorting his belongings. Isn't the idea of a secret lab just fascinating? So I thought I'd look into it. And then Miss Zu, Zukawa, stole it. I accidentally let it slip to her. She loved strange experiments like that, so it probably stuck with her. I thought as much, though. Whatever turned her into a monster is down in that secret lab. That's a pretty unscientific line of reasoning. Using the occult to turn yourself into a monster is utter nonsense. But if there's a scientific method behind it, I'll have to consider it. I suppose that's just how she is. Was your grandfather involved in the lab in some way, Hiru? Hmm, he could have been. All I know is he was an engineer with the rank of captain. Wait, hold on. You're both grandchildren of people involved with the engineering lab? And now both of you have the mark? Yes, that would be correct. That and our lab coats are probably all Hiru and I have in common. From what we understand, people with the mark appeared in the secret lab 50 years ago. There might be something there that'll help us find the truth behind the curse. That's also the origin of the Cannon Soldier, a name that reminds me of a statue. The traces of Miss Zoo in the shelter. It might all be connected to the Buddha statues that were stolen from H Shrine. Dr. Diamond gave us a lot of info. We'll have to thank Yasuoka for introducing him to us. The fates are indeed mysterious. Dr. Diamond, will you help us? Yes, of course. Just don't expect anything physical. Are you sick? You don't look so well. Yes, something like that. I don't practice what I preach, haha. <laughs> his dry laugh sounds like he's deflecting. He's abnormally thin for a man his age. It's possible he's gravely ill. So, we're heading to the shelter? About that. We were stopped from going further by a locked door. That strange old man was there, too. I doubt he'll cooperate with us, though. It'll be difficult to break in from there. Hmm. Where did you enter the shelter? A manhole on K. Miyamachi North Road. Hmm, I see. She opens the map and studies it. You're right, an entrance is there. But there seems to be one on the other side. It's at M. No South Alley. Have you tried going there? 
No, not yet. Then let's go there. Hopefully we can get in. New info was added to the spirit file. Rumors of the cannon sh soldier. Okay. So we need to pick a partner. I don't know that it matters, so I think I'm going to pick him. Because uh, we haven't used him yet. Uh, if it looks like... Because he said he couldn't do anything physical. So obviously if it looks like there's something physical he needs to do, then we'll come back. So let's, let's see if we can get anywhere. We reach the Mno South Alley. Like the North Road, it's silent and empty. It's hard to believe a lab entrance is on a residential street like this. In any case, we should look around. We know where we need to look. But let's look over here first. Even though this is a residential area, the street is completely deserted. We know it's down a manhole. There's a manhole. Unlike K. Miyamachi, this road only has one. It definitely looks suspicious. The manhole lid has a place to grip it, just like the one in K. Miyamachi. This has to be it. Still, this is strange. Why doesn't the public have any idea about this underground shelter? You'd think the sewer department would, at least. A reasonable conclusion. We can assume all info on this place is being concealed by someone. It'd be trouble if it were made public, huh? Then it's people who used to be involved. Yes, some are still alive today. A certain city representative used to be my grandfather's colleague. The Kudos may not be innocent either. Were they involved somehow? Oh, you don't know? After the war, the Cujo head was prohibited from public service. It was because he assisted the army in some manner. So he could have been involved with the lab. If I had to make a guess, this man holds a Pandora's box for any dignitary with a damaged reputation. I wonder what secrets we'll find. Still, you know a lot about it, considering. I'm interested in the lab myself, though not as much as Hero is. I've already done some research. But, this being such an important secret place, isn't it a little too easy to get into? True, they're not guarding it. The lid could have originally been locked or bolted shut somehow. This Miss Zoo might have done away with the restraints. When I lift the lid, a musty smell greets me. Ugh, this smells familiar. Like the other entrance, the hole goes deep. Thankfully, there's a ladder here, too. This reminds me of when I was a kid. Let's get going, Yashiki. Diamond and I descend into the dark world hidden beneath H City. What awaits us down in the darkness? Will we find the truth we're seeking? Or a hell smeared with blood. Chapter 5. Cannon Soldier. The sight that greets us at the bottom is the same as what we saw in K. Miyamachi the looming concrete walls, and the suffocating stagnant air. We weren't wrong to assume that the two places are connected. This is not a place someone with bad lungs like me should be. And is that an army song? Hearing that, I feel worse. It's been 50 years, so there's no way a radio or phonograph is still playing. Something supernatural has to be at work. It's so easy to fall back and blame things on the supernatural now. I've gotten too used to this occult world. Hmm, I see. I don't have any spiritual powers, so that kind of thing is beyond me. If you say so, then I believe you.
Okay. So, should we go forward or back? Okay, let's go back. Okay, it kind of dead ends here anyway, so let's look. There are pitch black stains. Is this blood? Seems so. Still, there's entirely too much of it. It's like a blood bag burst. But doesn't that other thing bother you too? Of course it bothers me. I imagine we're on the same page. It looks like something was posted here. There's a clearly defined clear space on the wall, as if something had been there. It looks like it avoided being sprayed with blood because something was originally posted here. Some kind of poster or bulletin? There's unfortunately no way to know. Uh, I guess we could feel it. It crackles and breaks off in flakes. Okay. Tool. I have no tools, so... I open my eyes wide and stare at the white space that might have been a poster. I only end up drying out my eyes. Okay, I was... Oh, I didn't mean to do that again. Okay, let's go back. Anything? Just a store. Just a store. It's a thick iron door. The keyhole isn't rusted. I could open it if I had a key. Okay, so we can't go here yet. So let's go forward. Um, another one of these. Okay, we've already done that. I imagine, but well, let's feel it just in, in case. I think it'll probably just be what we already saw, but here's another thing. A trail of blood leads to the ladder at the entrance. Was someone trying to escape? Okay. This looks like an emergency light. This place is abandoned. Has a power generator been running for all these years? Okay, I don't see anything else, so let's go forward. And then I guess we get a choice. Let's go left. When I step in view of an iron door that appears before me, the air clearly shifts. Goosebumps rise. A presence is approaching. There's an incessant beeping, like from a telegraph. I mean, I guess let's keep going. I shrug and keep moving forward. Oh, was not expecting. Okay. The beat becomes gradually louder, almost as if it's trying to tell me something. So, Morris code? I don't know what my options are. Okay. I have no freaking idea. Do we get it? Oh, crap. I don't know. I just guess. I just, oh. Uh, I hear a quiet voice. Point to your soul. I don't know. I don't even know what I just did, but I guess it was the correct thing. The beep suddenly stops. That was a miracle. Seriously? Amazing. A real supernatural event. Seriously? Amazing. A real supernatural event. Simon seems pleased. 
Glad you enjoyed it. I'm sure this will happen again, but there's no need to tell him that. Is it safe now? Yeah, probably. Hmm, then let's keep moving. I don't like that. Like, there is no way to know on that one. Yes, yes. I mean, I keep looking because I could potentially need something there, but it seems like it's just the same thing every time. <sighs> okay. The air in this room is musty. At first glance, I'd say it's part of a medical facility. It looks like an operating room. And this smell must be... Oh, there it is. Ishiki, sorry, but could you shine your light over there? I shine the flashlight as directed and find a corpse. Diamond crouches down and begins to study it. Whoa, it's pretty old. You might be better off having an archaeologist or an anthropologist look at this. Diamond skillfully examines the body. When they're done, they stand up again. The corpse is odd, extremely odd. The cervical vertebrae is severed. But the cut's a mess. Some kind of small bladed object did it most likely. Though it clearly wasn't a cut with a surgical tool. I cannot even imagine why anyone would do something so cruel. The head was severed with a tool, huh? It's too old. The corpse isn't enough. Someone should have left behind records. It might be wise to search the room. Yeah, good idea. New info is added to Spear File in the lab. It's a cabinet with a glass door. Looks like something inside. Uh, okay. I open it and search around. I find bells attached to a handle and a notebook with a black cover. It's titled Disposal Vat Management Record. I flip the cover open. Dispose 200 super dimension, suddenly, iron door, half spiritualized. Hypothesis, focused mystical forces. Need sacred object to erase. Safety valve release code, diamond. There's nothing else written. Got Kagura Suzu Bell's disposal vat management record. What in the world are these notes going on about? Disposal? Half spiritualization? I don't understand half these words. Plus, those bells I found don't fit this place at all. I close the notebook and put it in my bag. Just then, something tangles around my hand. Huh? It's a thin thread. It seems to be human hair. It glitters pale gold in the light. What? The mark starts sucking at my blood. I ignore it and instead stare at the shining hair, as if being pulled in. It's odd, but I get the real feeling that... This moment... No, it's here, this place. I... I've been here before. The mark's color grows more vivid. Early dawn, a few hours left until death closes in. Someone mumbles right next to me. Wait, that's not someone else. That's my own voice. As I thought, it's here. The words poured out from deep inside. I have absolutely no knowledge or control over them. Memories that aren't mine, words and feelings I couldn't possibly know are falling from my lips. Check the disposal vat. It must be behind that wall. Felt weird when standing in front of that wall. Ishiki? What's this all of a sudden? The instant Diamond speaks, the voices stop. It's nothing. I just remembered something important. Are you honestly all right? Those were some rather odd mumbles. I'm fine, really, just spaced out for a bit. For better or worse, Diamond didn't clearly hear what I was saying. Still, though, that voice. Could it be that 
My old self, the one I lost with my memories, was talking to me. The feeling I got when I saw that golden hair. Maybe that's what triggered it. I haven't heard the other guiding voice for a while now. I guess all I can do is rely on my old self. The disposal vat beyond the wall. The voice said to find that. New info is added to spirit file in lab one. Well, let me finish searching. It's a metal cabinet. Let's stick our hand in. I search the ones that are open. I find a notebook titled research records and an army short sword. The letters in the notebook have faded, but I can still read it. The experiment miraculously succeed. This divin protection. The aura statue, onated from H shrine, created by line statue makers. Using chisel, donated by same family, sever head. Tool together becomes the key, finally our dearest wish. There's nothing else written. Got research records. One, projectile short sword. It mentions a chisel. Does it mean those used for sculpting? Yeah, most likely. It's hard to believe, but did they actually use that to sever the heads? It's unbelievable doing something like that. I open the wire mesh door and peek inside, but I don't see anything. I go to close the door and see a paper stuck in the back side. Found a worn out talisman. Oh good. When I pick up the worn out talisman, I feel warmth flow through me. Got soul power. The worn out talisman crumbles silently in my hand. Let's check the body, I guess. It looks like it's been a number of years since the person died. The dried skin gives the appearance of a mummy. The cut by the neck is jagged. It must have been cut with some kind of tool. We know that. I guess I can't do anything with it, though. The light bulb is flickering weakly. Okay. Oh, I know what we didn't do. Oh. Okay, I didn't read the diary, and I don't have it anymore, it looks like. Crap. Okay. I guess it doesn't matter. Well, let's go across. Okay, it doesn't seem like there's anything in the hallway. So let's continue. The dry blood has blackened on the floor. There's quite a lot. Whoever left it probably died. Oh, uh, can I see the... I guess let's go to the sides, because they have dead ends. Okay, nothing on this dead end. So let's go back. And then let's go forward to this dead end. We go north at the intersection end. An outline of a door is flickering faintly in the wall ahead of us. Hey, look at that. Huh? What, are you seeing odd things again? You can't see it? Unfortunately, no. Looks like Diamond can't see the door. Mumble, mumble. That's the spiritual. My mouth begins mumbling words that I don't recognize all on its own. Oppose the spiritual with spiritual. If you touch it with a tool that honors the gods. The flow of words out of my mouth stop. Touch it with a tool that honors the gods. New info is added to the spirit file. Flickering half spirit door. Okay, well, we have the bells, so we can try that. Uh, the bells. I take out the Kagura Suzu bell. Is just touching it okay? No, have to mumble, mumble. <laughs> Strange words spill from my lips again. It's the priestess's tool. If a man displays spiritual power, it'll be destroyed, so touch it silently. All I have is questions, but I have no choice but to trust the other me. 
I touched the bells to the door carefully, making sure not to make any noise. I think I did the wrong thing. The next instant, the door physically appears. What? Wait, I'm not hallucinating, am I? I'm completely shocked. What magic did you conjure this with? It just felt like it was the right thing to do. But... I stare at the door. I sense an alarming presence. According to my own voice, if I can call it that, the disposal vat is beyond this door. I found some documents about it in the room with the operation, operating table. It might be good to look through those. Let's be careful. That place is giving me a bad feeling. Okay, let's... We already looked at that. I... Hmm. Well, I can't look at anything. I guess let's go back for now and see if... Did I go the right way? No, that's not the way I wanted to go. Let's not go to the that door yet. We'll go further down this way. And see if we can go in here. It's set up the same way as the operating room. This place may have been used for the same experiments. I hope there are sp experiment notes. Now let's get searching. It's a rusted filing cabinet. When I open the door, a cloud of dust flies up and blocks my vision. A notebook with black covers left inside. Got experimental unit correspondence code. Uh, it seems to be a document about cryptograms. Inside it says... Canon, weapon code name. Heavenly Buddha. Soul, human heads used as materials. Okay, so I lucked out, but this is where we should have gone first instead of the other room because this told us what we needed to know. It looks like Wabun code is similar to Morse. Okay. Let's feel it. I opened it and searched inside. I find a notebook titled Research Records and a small gun. The notes have deteriorated, but I can just make out what they say. 70th. Next experiment, Azura statue. Con male body and female head. Success. The... Or natural phenomenon, spirit, frequent, hard, continue experiments. That's all it says. Got research records too and palm pistol. It seems to be a record of the experiments performed here. How fascinating. Nothing's inside the metal cabinet. It looks like it's been a number of years since this person died. The dried skin gives the appearance of a mummy. The cut by the neck is jagged. It must have been cut with some kind of tool. I cannot do anything with it. So, I guess that is it in here. So we can leave. Okay, I'm not sure that I want to go to the vat just yet. Let's see what other stuff is there, because we have not gone this way up. Okay, there's a room right there. It's a thick iron door. The keyhole isn't rusted. I can open it if I had the key. Okay, so we don't have a key. I think... <sighs> okay... I guess the only thing we can do is go to the vat now. I guess let's do it. I push open the iron door and we head inside. Whoa, this is amazing. 
On the other side of the door is a large empty area reminiscent of a vault. Is this the disposal vat? It should be, but it's not quite what I expected. Something's on the ground. Hmm, looks like a sword. Got rusted army sword. I take what Diamond picked up. I shine the flashlight around the area. Are these heads of Buddha statues? They're kind of just scattered around. This might be a garbage dump. Just then. Huh? A sound echoes off something heavy moving, and suddenly the room is filled with a pale light. I have a rather bad feeling. Let's get out of here for now. I try to open the door to get out, but... What? It's locked! Impossible. A cutting coldness invades and envelops my feet. My head snaps up and I see water pouring into the room like a giant waterfall. Water? It's ice cold. A polar bear's swim is not something I'd ever wanted to do. It's quickly rising to our knees. I can't even feel my feet anymore. Water underground? We have to get out of here. We'll die of hypothermia. I have to remember. What was written in those documents about the disposal vat? All I see near me are Buddha heads. Something about diamond was the key. I touched the diamond R hat head. There's a heavy shudder and the sound of movement. Then the pooling water suddenly starts sweeping in one direction, down into a drain. Whoa! It's pulling us in. When I open my eyes, all I see is darkness. Ugh! I quickly lift my head and rub my eyes. My vision slowly comes back. This is... An intersection in the underground shelter. Looks like we were drained out with the water and flushed down a pipe. We were lucky. I very nearly breathe a sigh of relief. But then I remembered Diamond. That's right. Where's Diamond? No need to be so worried. Ha ha, so it's you. It's been a while, you sneaky intruder. It's that old man I met in the passageway beneath Manhole Street. I tried to ask him about Diamond, but... Ugh, ah. Uh, my jaw's nearly locked and my voice is gone. Don't try to talk just yet. The water here comes straight from the Team Mountain Range, so it's deadly cold. You were submerged in it for near an hour, so you'll be slurring your words for a while. Relax, relax. Your friend's fine. So you, uh, got somewhere to go back to? Ugh. I nod as I groan. The old man's face brightens like the sun. Well, that's great. Not that I'm demanding a reward for saving you or anything. But I am pretty darn hungry. The man eyes me, his smile sharp. We get in the car, and even though it's the wrong season for it, I turn the heat on full blast. We dry off with towels and the like, but it doesn't stop our shivering for a long time. While this is going on, the old man... Phew, it's hot. Can I open a window? He's blatantly fanning himself in front of us. Okay, yes, in a way we owe him our lives, but even so, he's being a pain. Hang in there a little while longer. Diamond shudders. You can see us shivering, can't you? How selfish can you get? It was an honest question, and it probably sucks for him, but we still keep the car like a sauna. After driving like that for a while, our teeth finally stop chattering. 
The man's name is Banshee Ito. That's how he introduced himself. But that obviously isn't his real name. As he sits next to me, Banshee gives off a savory smell, like freshly baked bread. It kind of cheers me up. Or at least it does for a few moments until I realize it's the stench of dried fill. So, Banshee, what were you doing in a place like that? Banshee remains silent. Are you listening to me? Don't feel up to talking yet. I'll tell you in exchange for food. I shouldn't be surprised. Life's rough. Wait, that should be my question. What were you two doing down there? It's a long story. I summarize everything we know about the spirits and the mark until I catch up to where we met him in the underground shelter. Hmm, hmm. So that's how it is, hmm? He nods vigorously to himself. I wonder if you truly understand, old man. Diamond's doubts are reasonable, but Banshee waves a hand dismissively. Of course I do. Who do you think I am? A terrible grudge is mucking up that underground shelter, and you guys are wrapped up in it now. His story suddenly sounds fishy. A grudge? Banshee, do you know what happened down there? I said I'm not talking about that yet. I was born into a noble family, so I've always had the ability to see things others can't. I stake my name, Banshee Ito, on it so you can trust me. There's a terrible grudge swirling there, and you've gotten swept up in it. He's got nothing to base his claims on, but I get the feeling he's on the right track. In that case, O oh noble Lord Banshee, would you tell us, how do we overcome that whirlpool? Banshee replies with a magnanimous flourish. That should be obvious. Whirlpools always have a center. You've got to find that. The center? That swirling grudge and the spirit thing. Is that what you call it? The birth of the spirit, the heart of the curse. Something like that should be left within that there swirling grudge. If you look for that, I'm sure then... He trails off. He gazes at the dark road, his mouth hanging open. It's like he's run out of batteries. Then what? What will happen? The black sky simply goes on forever before Banshee's eyes. Oh, that reminds me of Shiki. Banji calls out as soon as we enter the garage. Take this, just a little symbol of our friendship. Got underground shelter key. This is the key for the underground shelter? Mm-hmm. I found it when I was popping in and out from that place. I held on to it. But I'll lend it to you for now, Yushiki. He just picked it up. Why is he acting like it's a favor? But I have no reason to refuse him. Thanks, I'll borrow it. Hiru walks up to us. Oh, welcome back. Learn anything? Diamond butts in before I can speak. Wait a second. You're not really considering... You haven't fallen for that suspicious old man's story, have you? Wow, that's rude. If you want my opinion, a snotty punk like you should be trusted even less. Of course, Yusuke. You believe me, right? Ugh. <sighs> Does it matter? Sure. Gahaha, <laughs> that's my good pal Yashiki for you. Well, I suppose if you're fine with it, then I won't worry about it. We don't really trust him. But we... He, he could be a crazy one and we don't know. Anyway, changing the subject. Good grief, can we move on from talking about this? Banshee, you're hungry, right? The dining room should have something. Woo! Food! Food! Banshee bolts out of the garage and vanishes into the mansion. Hiro gives me an exasperated look. Mr. Yoshiki, you've got a crazy one on your hands this time. 
To appease the starving banshee, I offer him some cup noodles and sweet buns. The epitome of hunger, he greedily begins scarfing it down like a starving dog. That was enough for ten people. He devours all of it, and I'm reminded of a high-power vacuum cleaner. Excellent. I haven't been this full in forever. Ah, glad to hear. Mind answering some questions? Why were you down in that shelter? Well, that's an easy one. Because it's my home. What? Been living there ever since I found it ten years ago. It's not too shabby a place. Keeps me out of the rain and no damn brats messing with me. Though it gets a mite cold in winter. I don't know how to respond to that. Hero and Diamond seem to be the same. It was a paradise for me because no one knows about it. Until a weirdo showed up six months ago. Some woman doused in perfume. It was winter, and I don't like stirring up trouble, so I just stayed away. That must have been Zukawa. I nod. That's my thought as well. That was a month ago. I figured she must have up and left, so I went back. But now there's something stranger. Which was... A damn walking Buddha statue. I know I'm pretty out there, but even I was shocked by that. I even got this weird scar. Banshee removes his scarf, revealing the mark on his neck. You may not believe this, but that statue gave you that scar. I figured. It was the cannon soldier, after all. The cannon soldier? How do you know that name? Some document I saw had it. It was an old plan to make a Buddha statue move with supernatural powers. A heavenly Buddha project weapon. Are you nuts? Spirit powers making something move? That's insane. Now, now, Hiru, calm down. So the documents that you found, are they still around? Nope, I burned them for warmth. I had a delicious roasted potato, too. How could you? Maybe take your own advice, Dr. Diamond. Our measure of common sense seems to be rather different than this strange old man's. It's fine. My noggin works differently for most people's. I got it all memorized. As you say, just tell us. We need to know about that project. The Heavenly Buddha Project was the pet project of some general at the end of the war. So they built that shelter for it. Ta-da, the 13th Army Engineering Lab. To make the cannon soldier thing, they did tests on Buddha statues. They were brought from some shrine or something somewhere. That must be eight shrine. They did a bunch of stuff to infuse the statues with spiritual power. There was a monk from Tea Mountain, spiritual treasures from all over. But nobody thought anything to actually come from it. The project was just an excuse to keep that fanatical general busy. At least, it was supposed to be. But one day, the statue started moving. It went berserk throughout the lab and went crazy on a ton of people. The bloodstains and old corpses in the shelter are probably the victims. Some people survived, but they had red, bite-like marks on them. The thing went and wrecked the place then. It stopped and never moved again. No one knows what even triggered it. That's about everything it said. Hero and Diamond are as white as this sheet. I probably am too. It's a hard story to believe, but he has no reason to lie to us. I think he speaks the truth. What? Are you kidding me? A statue going around killing people and cursing them? Impossible. Then how do you explain the mark on his neck? Logic would dictate that moving statue he saw was the cannon soldier. 
back. The dormant soldier suddenly starts moving after 50 years. That might be the cause of mine and Hiru's marks. What if you flip that, though? Both of your grandpas got the mark from the cannon soldier. When the soldier stopped moving, their marks disappeared. But with it started up again, you got them because you're their descendants. If that's true, then the children inherited their parents' fate. Hiru can't seem to muster up any kind of counter-argument. I think she's in shock. I want to ask you something, old man. You say the cannon soldier stopped moving 50 years ago. But why? Uh, I think it was. Some spiritual person used a thingamajig to do something. So you have no idea. It's just the most important part. Try to remember. Hmm, it's not that easy, son. The mark might have made me forget. Taking his age into account, it's more likely it just completely slipped his mind. It seems we must defeat the cannon soldier to be free of our marks. We'll have to figure it out on our own if he can't be more help. You seem a pro at this, Yashiki. We'll be relying on you. I don't have spiritual powers or anything. But you've already faced down four different spirits, haven't you? A normal person wouldn't have survived. Now that he says it, I guess he's right. I have been hearing a mysterious voice a few times and having weird premonitions. I even caught myself unconsciously talking when we were down in the shelter. So what are your folks going to do now? Good question. I guess let's investigate the soldier. I don't know that it matters because we have to do all of it right. Let's investigate the soldier in the shelter. We'll need to do something about that to get rid of your marks. If I'm descended from someone on the project, then mine might disappear too. I guess we're going back in then. Hiru's still kind of sulking, but at least she's recovered from her shock. We'll all share the same fate. It's too late to try and run away. Yep, you should find it there. The heart of everything that's causing the curse. You need to stop that cannon soldier. That's what my gut's telling me. What are you going to do then? I'm full now, so I'm going to take a nap in the park nearby. I'll sit and wait till you fellas do something about that soldier. Just wait a minute, you old fart. Didn't we just say that it's too late to run away? Okay, okay, I get it. Well, you folks did feed me, so I guess I can help you. New info was added to the spirit file. The underground shelter's inhabitants. Other. Okay, well, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here, and we should be able to finish it up in the next one. It doesn't seem like this is a particularly long story. Uh, so we'll go ahead and end here, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!